How many people have completed the, uh, the exercises now? Okay, not very many more. Well, I'm going to go on. Uh, these exercises, you can just continue to do them while I'm talking or do them after when you have some free time. Uh, some of these exercises are actually kind of challenging, so I'm not going to wait for all of them to be finished. I, well, I mean, I, I did here. You, you just okay. inline what you want. You just these, you define this function so that this, these doc tests will pass. So yeah, let's just go through this first exercise. So the first exercise is just what will be the output of this code. And so you can see the same code is here. And it's being returned by test, this test func. And our func function is symbols exercise. So whatever, whatever this function is returning is what we need to return here, too. And so we're, first, we're setting x equal to 3. And we're setting y equal to the symbol y. And then we're setting a equal to x plus y. And so now x is 3, so a should be 3 plus y. And now we're setting y equal to 5, and we're returning a. So as you, re you recall, changing the, the variable y here doesn't change this y in a. So this, this statement here actually doesn't matter at all. So the, the thing that we should get is 3 plus y. And, but we get a problem y is not defined. So what we actually need to do is create the symbol y and once we do that we get the correct answer. Oh also if you notice there are solutions for all the exercises too. So if you want to cheat or if you give up or if you want to see how I did it X is not a variable, though. X is just 3 here. So if I, if I take this code here and I paste it into this cell, I get Y plus 3. See, X, X here, there was never a symbol X in this example. X is just the number 3. Y was the one that was a symbol. So it's kind of confusing. Variables can be assigned to anything in Python. You, a variable could be, could be a symbol. It could be a number. It could be a list. It could be anything. OK, so let me make, let me X make X a symbol again. So now, do I have anything? X squared plus 1. OK, so we already went over this a little bit. Uh, if you want to substitute something into an expression, use the subs method. And the simplest way is you just do the, the old the thing that you want to substitute and the thing that you want to substitute it w with. So if I, wanna, if I have this expression x squared plus 1 and I want to replace x with 4, I do subs x4 here. And as I noted, this doesn't change the expression at all. This returns a new expression. So uh, if, if suppose we want to do multiple substitutions at once, so let's say x plus x squared plus y plus 3. Y is Um, another way with subs is you can pass it in a dictionary or a list of tuples. So, for example, I want to set y equal to 3 and I want to set x equal to 7. And that equals 55. I could also do set y equal to 3 and x equal to 7 like this. And that'll give me the same thing. The, the advantage of doing this uh, list of tuples instead of a dictionary is that you can uh, define what order you want to do things in. So if, for example, 
if I wanted to replace y with x and then replace x with 7, with this dictionary, it might get to x first or it might get to y first. There's no, it's not. So this one, you see it actually replaced the x first. And that's why we still have an x in the expression. But if we do this way, first it will replace y with x, and then it will replace all the x's, including that new x, with 7, which should give us 7 squared plus 7 plus 3. Another useful thing with substitution, as you can see here, is you don't have to substitute a number. You can substitute anything with anything. So if I want to create, like, say, sine x, plus cosine x. Oh, let me. And I want to replace sine x with tangent of x. I can replace any expression with any expression. And subs tries to be reasonably smart about how it, uh, it replaces things. So if I have x to the fourth, plus uh, 1, say, and I want to replace x squared with y, it realizes that x to the fourth is x squared squared, and so it replaces that with y squared. And this sometimes doesn't work. Sometimes, you know, there is a limit to how smart it can be. But if you put in the exact thing that's in there, it will always work. And so another a cool thing you can do with this is if you want to create some kind of a nested expression, if you want to create an expression that's, um, like say this, let's take this expression here. Say I wanted to create x to the x to the x to the x. Um, I could start with x to the y, and then this part here would be the y. So I want to put set it equal to that. And now we have x to the x to the x. And if I run the same thing again, um, oh, I should have done a y here. Mm -hmm. So now I have that, and if I do the same thing again, I have that, and I can keep going. And if I finally put an x in there, and so let's see what our so this this uh, the ex exercises for this section are called basic operations, and. Um, Looks like the math doesn't work in my browser. So let me do. Uh, okay, uh, MathJax doesn't want to render this very well, but um, this exercise here is to create x to the x to the x all the way up n times. So you're gonna, you want to create a function that can do this n times. And uh, if you're interested, this is called the uh, Knuth up arrow notation. So, you know, if you have addition n times, that's multiplication. And if you have multiplication n times, that's exponentiation. And so if you have exponentiation n times, this is this Knuth up arrow notation. So go ahead and try some of these exercises for substitution. Okay, and for this last exercise, let me just show you something. So 
So let's say that we had this expression here, x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2x plus 3. And let's say that we, uh, we want to replace all instances of x that have an even power with y. So what we can do here is create this, use a, using a list comprehension. So x to the i, I want to replace x to the i with y to the i whenever i is even. So I've created this substitution for um, i up to 4. And so now if we do this, we see all of our even powers of x. So instead of x to the fourth, we have y to the fourth. Instead of x, 4x squared, we have 4y squared. But the other ones were left alone. So you, using these list comprehensions, you can actually do some pretty advanced substitution. So I'm going to give you a moment to try to work out some of these exercises. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want a hint, let me know. Seven. Question. Oh, I'll come help since I'm not getting I think it's probably the second. But, uh, like Right, so then 